everyone, welcome to BLW Oasis online service. I'm Priscilla. And my name is Alvin. We're so excited to have you today and for honoring our invitation. You know, in the scripture, it says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, it says that for, for where two or more are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. Yes. So, so even as we're gathering here, we're not really gathering unto man. We're gathering here in the presence of the Lord. Yes. We're going to be transformed by the word of God. And I think something that I'm really excited for is the Rhapsody segment. Mm. You know, the Rhapsody segment is a book that breaks down the word of God into everyday nuggets that could be taken. And it has so much value. And I'm so excited for you guys because you have the privilege of hearing it today. And another thing that I'm excited for is the praise segment. Ooh. We're going to be worshiping, just dreading and soaking in the praise of God. That is so excited, and I'm so excited for you guys to have that segment. What are you excited for exactly? Oh, I'm looking forward to the teaching. You know, today's um, service is going to be how to make your faith work. I'm not going to lie, there are some times where my faith really was acting very funny. So I'm really excited about that to, you know, up my uh, up the knowledge on faith so I can sure. grow. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, if you haven't already, like comment subscribe but before you do that in the previous service titled the grind never stopped there's an amazing you know comment that i would like to oh, okay. to read by krishan krishan says manifesting prosperity is so important and i'm glad you touched on that topic sometimes prosperity escapes us not because we are not deserving of it but simply because we are either oblivious mm. to the fact that it has already been provisioned and we don't ask for it oh. through prayer so that was a beautiful um Beautiful question. Thank you, Christian, for leaving that comment. So make sure you comment. So next time we might probably be reading your comment there. Marvin, would you like to pray with us and open the service? Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Um, Lord, we just thank you for today's service. Lord, we thank you for everyone that is coming to hear your word. We thank you that not only shall we be hearers, but we shall be doers of the word of God. Lord, we thank you because as your word comes to us, Lord, we thank you because the words that we hear are anointed and they produce in us the testimony of faith, that our, our faith is building up and that we're able to slay giants to overcome all the difficulties and the challenges that we face. We thank you, Lord, for today's segment. In Jesus' name we pray. And up next, we're going to have the Rhapsody of Reality. Stay tuned. Guys, it's Rhapsody time and our Rhapsody is from August 19th 2021 the title is your faith in the word our theme verse is from John chapter 3 verse 36 he that believeth on the Son had everlasting life and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him I've prayed I've confessed the word I have fasted I've even sown a seed yet my condition hasn't improved Oftentimes, people agonize like this as they struggle with their faith. This is because for the most part, they haven't learned how to use their faith. Until you discover how to make your faith work, you keep struggling. We have a book titled, How to Make Your Faith Work. Read it to learn more on the subject. There may be a time of struggling in any area of your life where you find a difference between the word and your personal experience. At such times, Meditate more on the word. Don't focus your mind on what is happening, but on the word, on what you believe. Soon enough, the world will grow mightily in you and over that situation and prevail. That's the guaranteed outcome. Praise God. Your faith is the victory over all circumstances and adversities of life. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. That is from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Keep acting your faith on the word. You might say, what if it doesn't work? Faith always works. If it did not work, it was not faith. Take advantage of God's extraordinary power in overcoming life's adversities by expressing your faith. Faith not expressed will not prevail. James chapter 2 verse 17 and 26 tells us that you express your faith in words and actions, remaining undaunted in the face of adversity. Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can achieve anything. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. And that is Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. So cheer up. The victory is yours already. Hallelujah. 
there's always a guarantee that your faith will work if you act on the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are times where our experiences do not match the word of God. It is our responsibility to dig into the word of God and meditate, inundate yourself with the word of God. And if you keep acting your faith and building your most holy faith, your situation would change and mirror exactly what the word of God says about you. This time around, it is your responsibility to make that happen. Praise the Lord. So when you act on your faith and not look at the left or the right or the storm that is going on around you, but at the word of God, you will prevail. That's a guaranteed outcome. Praise God. John, the first book of John tells us that we already have victory. Praise the Lord. As sons of God who have eternal life, we are victorious. So it is our responsibility to make sure that victory presides in our life. Praise the Lord. And make sure you get into the word of God and the book by Pastor Chris Oyakilome titled How to Make Your, make your Faith Work. And this will expand your mind more on what you need to do to turn your situation to mirror exactly what the word of God says about you. Right now, we're going to go into the time of confession. And please, please, your words are very important. So don't forget to repeat these words after me. Praise the Lord. The word of God is in my heart and in my mouth, prevailing as I speak it forth. I leave above Satan and the elements of this world because I am an associate of the God kind. By my faith in the word, I live triumphantly always. I can change what I want to change. I can achieve what I want to achieve by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We have our Rhapsody Club every weekday at 8 a.m. EST and 6 p.m. EST. This is a time where we come together to dissect the Word of God using the Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris Oyakilome. Do not forget to join us every weekday at 6 a.m., 8 a.m. EST and 6 p.m. EST. I'll see you there. At this time, we're going to be having a segment of prayer. You know, the Bible speaks about Isaiah. Isaiah was a man that stood in the gap of people that were perishing. God is calling us right now to pray for souls and to stand in the gap. So we're going to be reading in the scripture of Titus, chapter 2, verse 1, that says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. We're going to be praying that as our message goes forth through various platforms, that hearts so many are receptive to God's word and they embrace salvation hallelujah declare that with the church of christ that the church of christ is strengthened with might and filled with boldness to take the land for the lord another thing is some of us are going to be praying in tongues if you don't speak in tongues that's okay that is the language of the holy spirit a gift of the holy spirit but if but if you can only pray in your understanding that is okay so right now let's just begin to spend some time to pray hallelujah for many shall be saved in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice. Begin to speak words. Begin to speak over your city. Begin to speak over your friends. Begin to speak over your family. That they are getting saved in Jesus' name. That the gospel is reaching them. That 
fire that the veil of the enemy may be broken off them in Jesus' name. Come on, begin to declare, begin to speak words. For that situation is changing. Yes, they shall be saved. That person that you thought was lost, we declare today, that they shall be saved. They are taken from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. In the name of Jesus, that situation that was hopeless, we speak right now. For the Bible says, Marikalatai, we shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass. And right now, Marikalatai, begin to declare, begin to speak words, begin to imagine that friend, begin to imagine that best friend, that schoolman, that classmate that you've been seeing. Let's make intercession right now. And let this Marikalatai, Shadi, Abrazunda Marikalatai, 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 Thank you, Lord, Oh yes, they shall serve the Lord in Jesus' name. Abrazunda Barakalata, Jem Brakinda Barakasundu, Ibrazunda Barakalata. The gospel is reaching the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus. Abrazunda Barata. Every limitation is broken. Every obstacle is nullified in the mighty name of Jesus. The gospel shall prevail in our The gospel shall prevail in our homes. The gospel shall prevail. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice, Kalabarata. Lift up your voice, Ambra Kalabataya. For there is something that is shifting today as we declare right now, Kalabarata. There's a shift in the realm of the spirit tonight. Amen. But in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given unto us to pray and to see. Oh, yes, you said when we agree on earth is established in heaven. But I thank you because, yes, all those that are lost, oh, Makia, Kapara, and Delivaha, thank you because as the light is shining upon them, their hearts are softened. In the name of Jesus, they hear the word that gravitates to you. In the name of Jesus, thank you, yes, for our friends, our family, our co workers, and all those in our environment, our immediate and non immediate. But I thank you because as the word of God comes to them and as they hear, yes, they hear and they listen. Yes, the spirit of God ministers to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you because salvation is coming to them. Yes, in the name of Jesus, even you, after Jesus. water fills the earth. Oh, my cause, I love in Jesus' name we pray. Thanksgiving, amen. Hallelujah, amen. amen. And right now we're gonna head to the, to the next segment, the time of praise. Stay blessed. Every step that I take you, every 
beautiful and powerful service it has been so far definitely has been yes yes all right now we're gonna head into the offering tell us a little bit about the offering right you know one of the main reasons why we give our offerings is because it is a testament of faith you know God has given us everything in the world and one thing that he tells us to do is to give of ourselves so as you're giving your offering you're putting your faith in the Lord and another thing is it is a responsibility and the privilege that God has given to us to be able to give back to him praise God so right now, you're going to see the details on the screen for us to give our offerings. Amen. Hello, and welcome again to today's Oasis online service. My name is Pastor Deji, and I'm going to be sharing God's word with you today. Uh, but before I do all of that, um, I'd like to spend some time to pray over the offerings that we just give to the Lord. And if you don't mind, just bow your heads where you are, and I'll go ahead and pray over our offerings. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bring to you our offerings in recognition of your presence of your love of your kindness thank you father for all that we have given our tithes our offerings our special seeds lord we invoke the blessing of the spirit for multiplication upon them we declare that they are sufficient for that which they were received for which is the propagation of the gospel and we declare that they are multiplied back unto each and every one of us good measure pressed down shaken together running over men given to us in abundance even as the scriptures have said in the name of the lord jesus christ amen amen uh it's a very special service today i'm going to be talking to you about um, a subject called how to make your faith work what is faith about how does faith produce results what kinds of results can you expect your faith to produce we're going to be talking about that today and um before we jump into that i want us to pray again just to prepare our hearts for the message Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to receive your word, to be enlightened through the scriptures. Now our hearts and our minds are open to receive. Yes, insight is brought to us through the scriptures and we will never be the same again. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, so let's get right into it. I think one of the very interesting things to talk about when we're, when we're discussing the subject of faith is why is it so important why is the subject of faith important to christians in general whether you're a new christian or growing christian or you've been a christian for a very long time why is the subject and the discussion around faith important there are three three reasons that i've come up with of course there are more but the three reasons i've come up with why the subject of faith is important to the christian number one is that it is a requirement for pleasing god I'm going to read very quickly Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews in the Bible, um, chapter 11, verse 6. And uh, I'm going to read that from the New King James Version. Hebrews 11, 6. And it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, that is to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, that is, that God exists, that God is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That is, faith is a fundamental in your relationship with God. If you're going to have a relationship with an unseen God, you're going to need faith. So it is a requirement for pleasing God. Number two, we are supposed to live by faith. That is, we are designed as Christians to live by faith. And you'll find out why in the course of this service. But we are designed as Christians to live by faith. I'll show you that in Romans chapter 1. The book of Romans chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 17 in the New King James Version as well. And uh, pay attention to this. It says, in fact, I'll read from verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, 
for the Jew first and also for the Greek. It says in verse 17, for in it, that is in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And when it says the just shall live by faith there, it's talking about the righteous ones. And when we say the righteous ones, we don't mean those that do everything perfectly. No, we mean those that have received righteousness through faith. It says they will live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So that is number two. We are designed to live by faith. It should be, um, uh, it's, a, it's a part and parcel of everyday life. For the Christian. The Christian life is a life of faith. Number three, why is it important? Because we are justified through faith. That is, even our righteousness is a result of faith. I'll show you this in Romans chapter 5, um, reading very quickly verse 1. It says, Therefore, in the New King James Version, New King James Version, it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, the justification that we have with God. The fact that we are accepted of God and he doesn't consider us to be guilty of sin anymore was a result of our faith. Our faith in what? Our faith in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Our faith that when he died, we died. Our faith that when he was buried, we were buried. And that in doing those two things, he did them in our name for our sins. And then our faith that when he was raised unto newness of life, we were raised back to life again. So that faith in his finished works on our behalf is what gives us justification in Christ. So what is faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11 gives you the absolute best definition of faith that you can find anywhere in the world. And I always love to read this. Hebrews 11 verse 1. It says, now faith is. And, and you know, it's always a powerful thing to stop there because it speaks to the present hour function of faith. Faith is not the same thing as hope. Hope speaks of the future. Faith speaks of now. Don't forget that. Hope speaks concerning the future. Faith speaks concerning now. So it says, now faith is. And then it says, it is the substance of things hoped for. That is, again, you can see that the difference between faith and hope. It says, faith gives substance, reality, presentness or present, however you want to put it. It gives tangibility to what you are hoping for. It says it is the evidence of things that are not seen. It says faith is evidence. Faith is how you know you have something that your physical eyes cannot see. Faith is what informs you of realities that the outward man cannot see. Um, in thinking about faith, think about, and we'll talk about this later, uh, the fact that faith is informed from the word of God or informed by the word of God, God's light. So faith brings substance. Faith brings into now what was hoped for. It brings into now. It provides evidence of the reality and the existence of things that are not available to the human eye or to the human senses. So, I mean, the subject of faith is something that um, as a Christian, you learn all the days of your life. It never, uh, you, you, you never graduate from the school of faith. But the things that we're sharing today are foundational, foundational principles that will be helpful to you. So faith really is calling real what your eyes cannot see. That's in short form, calling real that which is not tangible or exposed to the natural eyes. Now, this is not a strange thing. It's not a crazy thing because sometimes people think, oh, that's ridiculous. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's delusional, <laughs> you know, but it is not at all because we do know that there are things even in nature that are real but are beyond the reach of our physical senses. We know that. We know. We know about the, the atomic world, the, uh, uh, you know, even subatomic uh, um, materiality 
We know about things that exist that we cannot see. So faith isn't strange. It just needs a different set of tools. In the same way that if you wanted to look to observe a virus or to observe bacteria properly in a lab, you would need specialized tools to observe these things that are not available to the naked eye for you to be able to speak confidently concerning their presence. Faith becomes, uh, faith then requires you to have specialized tools. In fact, it becomes the specialized tool by which you're able to bring into materiality things that the human eye cannot see. Another thing to be mindful of while we're defining faith is that faith actually is God's modus operandi. Faith is God's MO. It is mode of operation. It is it's it's how God functions in the things that He does. And I always like to show people this. Um, you know, sometimes you may you may maybe if you wonder to yourself, uh, the, the question that people often ask, you know, the you, which one came first? The chicken or the egg and i think that anyone that knows this you know what i'm about to share with you now knows the answer to that let's take a look at genesis chapter one genesis of obviously as you know um in genesis chapter one uh, speaks of creation it's the it's the book of creation and it talks about you know god the things that god made and i wanted to you know um take a look at this genesis one and I'm going to read verse 12. I want to show you something interesting here. Uh, it says, actually from verse 11, Genesis 1 from verse 11, it says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. Now he's creating vegetation. Then the Bible says, And it was so. Verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass, speaking in the past tense now, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. Then look at what it says, and God saw that it was good. Now, when you imagine the creation of the earth in six days, oftentimes people imagine this as you know, God creating vegetation and the trees and grass and all that. And God says, let there be, let the earth bring forth grass. And then all of a sudden grass, is boom, 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 out of the earth. Or let the earth, you know, bring forth trees. And then these tall trees just shoot up out of the earth. That's what sometimes we imagine, but not necessarily so. Take a look at chapter two. Just one chapter after that. I'm going to read from verse four. And it says here, at this time, it has given all of the accounts of creation. And then verse 4 says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Then look at what it says in verse 5. Pay attention to this. Before any plant of the field was in the earth. And before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to till the ground. What? Then look at what it says in verse 6. But a mist, speaking of water, went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Do you mean to tell me by this scripture... And read it a bit closer, you know, you, you, you can rewind and <laughs> read, read that again. Um, do you mean to tell me by this, that even though God said, let there be herbs of the, uh, you know, uh, um, herbs and trees and grass, there was actually nothing until God caused the water to come upon the earth and then they grew. But the Bible says that God saw it. Faith, you cannot understand faith without realizing that God lives in a different dimension from us. God operates in a different dimension from us. And that dimension has control. That dimension is what you call the realm of the spirit. That dimension in which he lives has control over our three-dimensional world. So whatever 
whatever is created in that dimension, it's only a matter of time. It'll be made manifest in the physical world. So when God said that he saw that it was good, that was faith. That was faith because faith sees realities in the spirit that are not exposed to the human eye. Faith sees it. Faith sees it. Faith knows that it is there. It's kind of someone, imagine someone going to, to a doctor and the doctor does a scan and he sees cancer cells. The person may not feel anything yet. It's only a matter of time. Why? Because the tools that the doctor uses have exposed something that is not accessible to the senses of that individual. So faith operates from a realm that is real. The realm of the spirit that is real, but, but that governs our realm. So when God said, let there be, he saw that it was in his realm. But in the physical, there was a process of time that was required. There was watering of earth that was required. Meaning that when he spoke, likely it was the seed that was in the earth. As we see here in the scriptures. So faith is God's mode of operation. No wonder we are required to live by it to have a relationship with him. Let's take a look at... Um, Romans chapter 4. The book of Romans. I'm going to read chapter 4 and I'll be reading from verse 17 into verse 18. Very quickly now. It says, in fact, I'll read from verse 16 actually. From verse 16 it says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, what he's saying there, he's, he says, um, he's talking about um, the, the faith that produced righteousness for us. And he says that that faith applies to those, uh, well, he says so that the promise may be sure. And then when he talks about the promise, there, he's talking about the promise of God to the seed and he says that the seed here is not talking about the Jews only but everyone that will call Abraham father through faith you know that's what he's talking about so he's talking about the things that are um the righteousness that that was made possible for us through faith in God but where we're actually going in verse is verse 17 and it says as it is written I have made you a father of many nations he quotes God's word to Abraham in the presence of him who he believed God now look at how he defines God. He says, God who gives life to the dead. And then look at what he says. And calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Did you hear that? He says, God calls things that don't exist as though they did. Now, how does he prove it? He proves it. One second here. He proves it by making reference to a scripture in that Romans 4 verse 16. He references Genesis chapter 17 verse 5. I want us to take a look at that. Genesis 17 verse 5, very quickly. And I'm reading the New Living Translation. It says, What's more, I am changing your name. This is this was God's word to Abraham. I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abram, A-B-R-A-M. Instead, you will be called Abraham for... I want to, I want to read this from the... Uh, um, Abraham means uh, father of many, while Abram means exalted father. Let's take a look at this in the New King James Version. Romans, um, Genesis 17, verse 5. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. That's what I wanted to correct there, because New Living Translation sort of took it um, differently than the original. The original was saying that, it says, for I have made you a father of many nations. Now, this is a very important thing about the way God talks. God is talking to a man that doesn't have a child, a man that's way too old to have a child. And it says, I have made you, spoke in the past Hence, I have made you a father of many nations. That's what we are, is being referred to in Romans chapter 4. I'm going to go back to that Romans chapter 4 again. That's what it's, that scripture is referencing in Romans 4, 
verse 6, verse 17. It says, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations in the presence of him who believed. That is, in the presence of Abraham. God, he says, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. God speaks of things that don't exist as though they are. So he talks to Abraham and he says, he changes his name, calls him Abraham, a father of many, even though the man still had no child. Faith is God's mode of operation. Now, let's understand the different types of faith that the Lord Jesus Christ teaches in the scriptures. This will be helpful to you. There are four types of faith that we see um, in the scriptures. One second. Four types of faith. In fact, there are four types of faith, but there's one type of faith that we don't talk about when we're listing the four types. So I want you to um, uh, pay attention to this. The first one that we don't often, we don't include in the four types of faith is zero faith. That's no faith, having no faith at all. Uh, let's take a look at Mark chapter four. And I'll show you some scriptures uh, quickly to um, the reference points for you in this. Remember, it's church, so you should open the Bible. Mark four. Uh, verse 40, very quickly now, it says, But he said to them, this was in a specific situation, something had happened, and Jesus says to his disciples, he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? No faith. So it's possible for a person to have no faith at all. Zero. But when we come to the four types of faith that we discuss as Christians, now the reason why I say that zero faith is not included, I'll share that with you. In fact, I can share that with you right now. It's because if you are a Christian, you're born again, you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you do not have zero faith. Every Christian has faith. It comes packaged in with your salvation when you receive it. You ask, how do I know that? Romans chapter 12. I want to show you quickly in Romans 12, in the scriptures, Romans chapter, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, when he says everyone who is among you, he's writing to Christians. He says to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. He says, don't be prideful. Then he says, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each, to each one, he says, the measure. He says, here he says, a measure of faith. But the King James, actually, I was reading the New King James right now. The King James gets it more accurately. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. He says, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Definite article. The measure of faith. Meaning that every one of us has been dealt, gifted by God, the measure of faith. There's a specific measure of faith that came when you give your heart to Christ. So there's no Christian that can say that they have no faith. You have faith. The faith with which you received Christ as Lord of your life, that faith remains with you. You have faith. Now, do you need to do something with it? Absolutely. That faith that you have is a seed. What do you do with a seed? You plant it. You plant it so that it grows and bears more fruit of its own kind. That's what you do. So the four types of faith that we're going to be talking about, they speak to the quantity of faith and then they speak to the tensile nature of faith. The first two, little faith or small faith and large faith or great faith speaks to the quantity of faith. Is it small or is it much? The other two speak to the tensile nature of faith. Is it weak or is it strong? So we have little faith or small faith. We have great faith or large faith. We have weak faith and then we have strong faith. It is possible to have little faith that is strong it is possible to have 
great faith that is a lot of faith that is weak we're going to talk about that um very shortly so the bible describes these let, and uh, let, let me just show them to you um very quickly um in the scriptures uh matthew chapter 16 the book of matthew chapter 16 And I'm using the New King James Version. I'm going to read verse 8. It says, But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, O you of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. He speaks of little faith. He says they had little faith. Matthew 15, verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Praise God. Romans chapter 14. Verse 1. Receive one who is weak in the faith. Weak in faith. So it's possible to have weak faith and then Romans chapter 4 verse 20 and it says I'll read this in the King James Version Romans 4 verse 20 it says concerning in fact let's read from verse 19 and be not weak in faith. Again, it speaks to weak faith. He, that is Abraham, consider not his own body, now dead. He didn't look at his body and the state of his body with respect to what God had told him about having a child. He says, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20 says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God, strong faith. So what's the difference between these? Little faith speaks to the quantity of your faith. But what do you do if you have little faith? What are you supposed to do if you have little faith? You're supposed to increase your faith. The Bible tells us exactly how to do that. It doesn't leave us in the dark. In, understand this, in many, in many regards, fear is the opposite of faith. In the same way that as a child growing up, your fears were learned. You learned fear through information. Someone told you that you should be afraid of the dark. Someone taught you that you should be afraid of certain people. In the same way, faith comes by hearing. It comes by the information that you receive. And the Bible literally says that. It says it in Romans chapter 10. So if you're going to have more faith in God, you would have to listen more. Pay attention to this. Don't forget this. If you will have more faith in God, you will have to listen more to what God has to say concerning you, concerning those around you, concerning the world in which you live. CNN, BBC, Fox News, they will bring fear to your heart. The new systems of this world will bring you fear. But God has an account in the scriptures that can cause faith to arise in your heart in spite of negative circumstances. It matters who you're listening to. The source of information determines if you will have fear or if you will have faith. Romans 10 verse 17 says, and I love the way that the Bible constructs it. So then faith cometh, I love it, by hearing. Meaning that if I don't feel like I have sufficient faith, I know exactly what to do. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, what if you have lots of faith you've heard so much your faith is built 
but your faith is weak. What does it mean for your faith to be weak? Your faith is weak when it has not been tested. It has not been uh, um, put to work. It's much like when you consume food for your body and if you take in more and more of these calories and you don't convert them into muscle, you could have a lot of, um, you could gain mass, you could gain weight, but without having strength. In order for you to have to convert that much that you have received into strength, you would have to exercise it. It is about putting your faith to work. That's what determines if it is going to be strong or if it is going to be weak. Um, understand this. When we discuss faith, faith is a law. It is a principle in the earth, much like you have um, gravity. It produces results every time. It is a principle that has been established by God that is designed to yield the same fruit every time. Let's talk about three important things to be mindful of, three um, principles of faith that you want to be mindful of. Number one is that faith speaks, faith talks. Romans 10, the same Romans 10 um, that we had read earlier, but verse 6, I'm just going to read a small part of it. It says, but the, I'm going to read this from the New King James Version, uh, Romans 10, uh, verse 6, but the righteousness of God, of faith rather, it says, but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Now it says, dot, 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 whatever it is that he says, but I'm trying to draw your attention to something. Faith speaks. Faith speaks. Let's, you know, to even make that more clear for you, Mark 11. I want you to take a look at this. This is one of the most important scriptures when, when it comes to understanding faith. Mark 11, verse 23. And I'll read from the New King James Version as well. Mark 11, 23. It says, For assuredly, these are the words of the Lord Jesus in red, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says that's faith he will have whatever he says he says but that person must say to this mountain faith speaks and it's very easy to understand too because think about it the faith that god exhibits the faith that God, God works out. When we read in the book of Genesis that I referred to you, you referred you to earlier, spoke, spoke things into being. Number two, faith agrees with God. Faith always agrees with God. Romans chapter three, um, that's the faith of God, obviously. Romans chapter three, verse four. It says. Uh, let me read this in the King James Version. Verse 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. It says, let God be true, and every man a liar. Faith believes God over circumstances. Faith believes God over your present situation. Faith believes God over what the news are saying. Faith believes God over what the what the uh, um, economy of the nation is saying. Faith believes God over what the stock market is saying. Faith believes God over what the doctors are saying. Faith believes God. Believes God's account. No one says in the book of Isaiah, who hath believed our report? Who has believed our report? Whose report will you believe? That's what your faith is. That's that's the 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 the, the point of decision. The fork in the road between faith in God and fear of the world circumstances. Whose report will you believe? Number three, faith does not observe circumstances. Let's take a look at Romans chapter four. I told you earlier that at a very old age, it was almost, you know, about a hundred years old, God tells Abraham that he was going to have a child. Getting close to a hundred, he says he's going to have a child. Romans chapter four, I'm going to read from verse 20 to verse 21. He says concerning Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Then what he says in verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what, that what God had promised, 
he was able also to perform. I'll, let me read it from verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not consider the circumstances. He took God at his word. He believed that what God said, he was able to make good on. So what are you going to do to develop your faith? You need to find out what God has said. Faith is founded on God's word. God creates by his word. God heals by his word. God intervenes by his word. Everything God will ever do. Did you know that all that you need to live an excellent life of joy, of peace, of prosperity, of success, everything that you required, God made it available long, long ago. But because he lives in a realm different from yours, you need faith to access those things and bring them into the realm in which you live. So what are you going to do? You are going to increase your knowledge of God's word. What does God say about your mind? You need to find out. Think about it. If, if Abraham did not know what God said about his body and his ability to bear a child, he would have lived his entire life, died without having a child of his own, even though it was a desire of his according to the scriptures. He would never have known that he could have had something different. Whatever situation you're in, you can have something different. God planned for you to have an excellent life, a glorious life, a beautiful life. But you will need to know what he has said. What has he said concerning your mind? Oh, you know, imagine you're saying, uh, I'm constantly tortured by, you know, thoughts that I don't like. What has he said concerning that? What has he said concerning your, that your health in your body? Oh, you, you, you're in school. I'm not so smart. School isn't for me. This is the, the most difficult thing I've ever done. What has he said about your ability to comprehend information? What has he said about peace in your heart? What has he said? You're going to need to find that out. Of course, if you're a part of Oasis Online, you've been hearing things that God has said already. But there's something I'll highly, two things I'll highly recommend to you that will teach you every day what God has said concerning you that you must know for your faith to be built up. Number one is the Rhapsody of Realities. Get a hold of the Rhapsody of Realities. It's the number one daily devotional in the world. I've been reading that book for the past 18 years. And I can guarantee you that your faith in God will grow naturally by reading the Rhapsody of Realities every day. It takes you about five minutes every day to read. Or you can join us. Even better still, you can join us 8 a.m. Eastern Time every day, every day of the week except Sundays, and um, 6 p.m. Eastern Time as well. You can join either one of the two. You don't have to be in both of them. Join us for Rhapsody Club. Listen in as we read the Rhapsody Realities together and build our faith together. Your faith will grow naturally. Naturally. The other thing that I would like you to be to, to get a hold of is the Pastor Chris Digital Library, pcdl.co, where the man of God, Pastor Chris, who's also the author of Rhapsody of Realities, has over 600 sermons, messages on different topics that you can listen to on the go. Listen to in your car. Listen to while you cook. Listen to at home. That will build your faith strong. That's in increasing the size of your faith. Now, in strengthening your faith, you're going to have to act like a child. You're going to have to take God as a, at his word and do the things that he has said. You would have to put his word in your mouth and believe like he says here concerning you know, how Abraham acted in Romans, Romans chapter 4, verse 21. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he's able also to perform. You would have to act out your faith. You would have to say things consistent with your faith. You would have to do like Abraham and change your name. Abraham's name meant an assumed father. Abraham, A-B-R-A-M. Someone that was respected as a father but didn't necessarily have a child. God changes his name to Abraham. Now this man is going around and calling himself a father of many nations, introducing himself to people that way. Even though there was no child yet, he could have said, oh, let me wait until the child comes. That's not faith. He went about introducing himself by the name that God had given to him, even before the child ever came into being. 
you will have to take God as it, at his word. Meaning that if you thought you weren't intelligent before and you found out through the scriptures that you have a sound mind and you have the mind of Christ, you will have to begin to say, I have the mind of Christ. I have an excellent mind. Even when it doesn't appear to be so just yet. Praise God forevermore. Wow. What an amazing time today. I'm sure you've been tremendously blessed. Now, if you've listened to me and you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you have zero faith. <laughs> You are at the zero faith level. You need to receive the faith that comes through Christ Jesus. And it's very simple. If you believe that Jesus Christ came and that he died for your sins and that he was raised from the dead for your justification, you're halfway there. The Bible says once you believe that, all you have to do is make a declaration of it with your mouth and you'll be catapulted into salvation. I want you to say these words after me and mean them with all of your heart. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. I believe that he was raised again for my justification. I accept Jesus Christ to be the Lord of my life from this day. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Now as simple as that prayer is, if you said it, God heard you and he caused something supernatural to happen in you, and I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that from this day the influence of Satan is broken from your life forever. I declare that the purpose for which God has caused it to be born into his kingdom at this time is fulfilled in due time. I pray that the Lord will bring you peace, that he will grant you understanding of the scriptures, and he will bring you into glorious fellowship, friendship with him. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, if this is your first time joining us, whether you gave your heart to Christ just now or not. Welcome. Welcome to Oasis Online. We don't take it for granted at all that you chose to participate in the service today. Remember to like this video, subscribe, and share with your friends, especially those who may not have access to church or may not, for whatever reason, be able to attend a physical church um, around them. Share this with them so they can be a part of us and also share your information with us. We want to know that you're participating in these services so that we can constantly share important information with you. Same with those that actually gave their hearts to Christ, you know, just a few minutes ago. Share your details with us. Let us know that you gave your hearts to Christ because there's important information and materials, free materials that we would love to share with you that will help you in your journey of faith. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, listening to today's service. Uh, we have a few more things to share with you, so stick around for just a little while more. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus, that the Lord himself will answer your questions, solve every problem, bring you into the fulfillment of your divine purpose in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you'll be strengthened in faith, that you'll be strengthened in your mind. I rebuke depression and anxiety in the name of Jesus. I rebuke sickness from your body. I command them to leave you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. I command the depression to go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you're going to dwell in health and in strength all the days of your life. And the purpose of God is established concerning you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much again. It's been Pastor Deji sharing God's word with you today. Until next time, God bless you. everyone welcome to today's segment of what's going on with your favorite host pastor danny praise god i know you've been having an exciting time in service and welcome to the family so i'm gonna keep you up to date with everything that you have to keep up with and get in touch with us so you don't want to be left behind this train is moving praise god now I know maybe you may be new here and wondering what's really going on. Well, we have a seven class program called Rock Solid Academy that is just tailored for you to keep you up to date and give you the foundations of who God is, of your ministry in Christ Jesus, how to find your purpose, 
What is Christianity? That is what Rock Solid is there for. So you're gonna go and register if you've never been part of it before in the link below or in the description box and be a part of it. You're gonna have teachers who are gonna teach you and are dedicated to bringing you the word of God in its truth and power. Praise God. Lastly, if you have any questions or you have a prayer request, you know, there's something that is bothering you, you can send in your questions and prayer requests to the link below or in the description box below. We would love to hear from you. Now make sure you're staying tuned to everything that we have going on, liking our Instagram posts, keeping up with us. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, everything <laughs> and follow us on instagram at the oasis.usa as well as king's chat at the oasis.usa i'm your favorite host pastor danny and i'm gonna see you next time bye what a beautiful time in god's presence we're looking forward to hearing your testimonies on faith yes definitely looking forward to how you use your faith to work and before you log on from today's service don't forget to like share comment and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> all right so we'll see you next service have a good one bye